Hi, uh, my name is Tim Barnhart, and this commercial is brought to you by the Indigenous Medical Cannabis Association, reminding you that there's a meeting at the um, community center on Time the Negative First Nation on March 25th, 2017. Please come on out. Yeah, this is Gary uh, Wasikizik for uh, Real People's Media. Um, I've been kind of moving around a little bit for the past week. Uh, I was in Ottawa, uh, but here I am today in Tandanega. Uh, um, as I believe in this medical marijuana issue that's uh, out there today, I believe it helps, it heals, it does what it does. And I believe that in stores like the one that I'm in front of, um, I'm in Tendonega, like I said, you know, I'm at, uh, I'm at Legacy 420. Um, I believe, you know, like places like this here is exactly what we need today. Not only for, like, you know, having a, um, not only for our, 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 uh, what would you call it? Our financial situation, right? A lot of, a lot of communities up in where, what I know about the communities up north are in very much dire need of their in financial situations that they're trying to crawl out of. And we depend on the government quite a bit, you know, for our handouts. We're writing proposal after proposal. We're doing this, we're doing that, begging, protesting, demanding, marching, you know. Um, and we're always crying about the water crisis. We're always crying about other griefs, you know. Um, the financial matters, especially. A lot of our people are having hard times. They're, they're, a lot of our people are having rent problems in the municipalities and cities that they live in. And, um, you know, it's time to take, uh, it's time to uh, um, take the bull by the horns, man. Why don't we start taking care of our own, you know? Like, why don't we start doing our own thing, you know? And, you know what I'm saying? So one of the things that I believe in is places like this here. This is what we've got to do. This is exactly some of the things that we have to do. One of the ideas that we have to do as a First Nations, we have to start, you know, talking about our rights as First Nations people, you know? They've brainwashed us into this thought that we, we don't have no rights. We have to vote, we have to do this, we have to do that. No, in reality, we can do things like this, like Legacy 420 and other, you know, dispensaries. <laughs> and start providing an economy for our First Nations people and start taking care of our own people, start doing what is right for our people. Um, ventures like this are very good for uh, generating um, what everybody wants and needs, and that's money. And if you direct that money to certain programs within First Nations, say for sports equipment or if a family needs food or other benefits there's to uh, having places like this, you know. If it becomes banned on, you know, every if you can't have um, a legacy 420 or a, a building like it on a First Nations territory, well, put one up in in your name in some municipality or city where the money is, where the cash flow is, so that you can start generating money for your own community, so that it benefits your community. You have to, we have to start looking at it other ways, right? So, you know, I'm at a place like Legacy 420. Uh, come on inside, we'll tell you all about it. Well, right on. Okay. So yeah, I'm inside. This is Legacy 420. This is the store we're at, we're in. Um, place I believe in. Um, you know, this is what they've got and like I said, this is what I believe that other First Nations and other communities should be doing. This is exactly what, or, you know, whatever other thought that they have that goes with this, you know. It's not only, um, it's time for our people to uh, not only have dispensaries in that, but we have to get into that thought frame again about um, growing our own, you know. We have to start growing our own food, our own medical, our own medical, um, our own medical cannabis. Start taking care of our own needs, right? So, and having places like this is exactly along that line. We like said, not only do you start growing your own, your own medical marijuana, but you also start growing your own food. Like I said, there's there's an offshoots to this whole program. Not only are you growing your own marijuana and benefiting from, you know, the crops of marijuana, 
uh, medically or financially, you know. But you're also learning how to grow your own, grow your own potatoes because you're going to have green houses. We're going to start putting up green houses, right? Hopefully, we start putting up green houses also. So you start not only do you start growing marijuana and other, other you start growing other like tomatoes and potatoes and corn and other and green houses. You can grow anything that you want that would benefit our people, not only combat some of the issues that we have, like our health problems, like diabetes, cancer, and other health problems that we have today. Um, so like I said, I believe in places like this, and I believe that, you know, like I said, again, over and over, First Nations people have their right to do this. You're within your legal right. You know, if a chief and council does not believe in a place like this, well, they're a part of a system that does not believe in their people. They're part of a system that's holding their people down. So when they say no, no, no to a, a place like this, they're withholding our people, they're holding their people down. They don't believe that. Like I said, every community member in First Nations has that right to just grab the bull by the horns, start setting shop up and start growing your own. Because hopefully, you know, in a place like this, you benefit a community. Not only do you benefit yourself, but you start doing offshoots. You start with the financial um, situation you'll find yourself in because these places are hot, man. These places, people want these places. As you can see, you know, like, if, if you witness a dispensary in action, you're going to see a lot of traffic, man. You're going to see a lot of people going in and out all through the hours of the day. And so why shouldn't we be creating that money for First Nations people that are in dire need of money? And start supporting our people, start working for our people and start, you know, dispensing some of this cash flow to our people and start quit this dependency on the on the government that's, you know, in power now, whether it be liberal, NDP or progressive, conservative. No, we have to start depending on our own people, doing our own thing. You know, we're brainwashed into that fact of government giving us money all the time and depending on that dependency issue, right? That's who we are. We're depending on the government, writing proposals and doing demonstrations and rallies and hoping for some money from the government. No, we start creating our own money. No, we start doing our own thing. Places like this, starting off with places like this, and then start building up stories, start building up, you know, and doing it. And we'd be doing exactly what they don't want us to do. Start standing up, start taking care of our own, because that's who we are. We take care of our own, we do our own thing. We were doing it before they got here, and today we're starting to wake up, and hopefully we'll start doing what we're going to do. Thank you for Real People's Media. Gary Wasikin.